Okay, we're going to be talking about the basics of set theory today. Um, so sets um, either can be described or listed out explicitly. Um, for example, let me just take a set. Um, let's say it's a set A. And let's say that A is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9. And then let's take another set, let's say um, set B, be creative here. Um, B is going to be um, 1, 4, 7, 8, 9. Alright, so basics of set theory. Um, first of all, we have some symbols that we need to look at. The first one is this one. This means is an element of. So we could say that 3 is an element of A, right? We could say that 4 is not an element of A. 4 is an element of B. Okay, so if you want to do a not, you just cross it out. Now, um, we also can talk about subsets. This means is a subset of. Now, sets are either, once we've defined them, we can use their letter, or they're listed in brackets like this. So we could say that um, 1, 2, 3 is a subset of A. It's a piece of that one, right? Um, so could we say that 3 and 5 are a subset of A? Another notation, a little n. This means the number of elements in a set. So the number of elements in A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be 5. The number of elements in B is also 5. Just because they have the same number of elements, does it mean the sets are the same? No. It doesn't. Now, when we're talking about things, we usually have a universe that we're in. Um, and by looking at these, what do you think our universal set is? Maybe the natural numbers? Yeah, yeah that'd be a great one to have here. So what if we said that, that um, U is um, uh, natural numbers for this, for, the, for this one that we're looking at? Then we could list out everything that was not in them um, if we wanted to. I'm not going to go into all that right this second. But I really want us to, to, to look at how these sets work together. Um, let's look at uh, intersections of these two sets. <clears throat> Intersection is denoted by an upside down U. Intersection of A and B. Now, let's look. Intersection means what they both have in common. Well, they both have a 1. Um, two, three, four. And they both have a 9. That would be the intersection of those two sets. The intersection is what they have in common. Union would be taking all of one set and combining it with the other set. So the union of A and B would be everything that's in A and everything that's in B. And we usually do write them in order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we need to put down a 7, an 8, and a 9. Now, 
let's see what else we can find. Um, some other notation you might want to be aware of. This is considered the null set or empty set. It is a set with no elements. It is empty. Okay, that one, that's easy. Um, we have the subset. We've talked about intersection. We've talked about union. Let's look at, um, I probably put that in the wrong spot because I just suddenly thought of something that would be a good one to add in here. Not. It's got a little dash in it. What if I, well, that would take too much for this one. What if I change my universal set? <laughs> I really don't want it to be. Um, let's say it's, a, it's an element. Here, we're going to change up the universal set here just to, to help me with this example. Universal set is a set of all numbers. And I'm going to use a little bit of a set builder here. Um, it's called set builder notation. And it's how you can build a set if you're not explicitly writing them out. Uh, this means all the numbers such that, this little symbol means such that, that they're an element of the natural numbers. I like that idea. So we're saying that they're all natural numbers, and I want all of the numbers between 1, and I'm going to end it at 10. Um, that way, my, my universal set is for this problem is only going up to 10. So let's see if we can um, put these maybe in a Venn diagram and look at them a little bit closer. Sometimes that really does help make it more visual. Um, see if I have, so what did they have in common? So we know A and B overlap, right? Here's A, here's B. Here's my universal set, and it is a good idea to label that U. Okay, they had in common 1 and 9. So 1 and 9 would be in their intersection. Now, A also had 2, 3, and 5. B had 1, 4, seven, and eight. Now remember, I just redefined my universal set to be one to ten. So what am I missing here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six goes out here, seven, eight, and nine. So I want to look at some things. I want to also look at this idea of not being in a set. So what would be the elements in not A. So anything that's not in A. So A is this circle here. So not in A would be 4, 7, 8, and the 6. So it would be 4, 6, 7, and 8. You notice how this is in the universe. It's not in A and it's not in B, but it's still in the universe. So we still got to look at it. What about not in B? Well, here's all of B going to be 2, 3, 5, and 6. Um, what if I said I wanted to take A and intersect it with not B? Ooh. Okay, so all of A, but not B. So A, but not B. So we're covering it all B. Now if we're intersecting, does the 6 intersect? No. 
this would just be 2, 3, and 5. So you can start to have a lot of fun with the way this is set up. Um, the complements of sets are these knots. So if you ever hear complement, that's what we're talking about. And we're going to go into a little bit more on Venn diagrams here in the, um, the next section. I just wanted you to get an idea of these elements of a set and a little bit of the notation in this group.